way down. Um, tell us a little bit about yourselves, um, what your transition to Stony Brook was like, maybe what you're majoring in, and we'll all just get comfy, get to know each other today. All right, so I'm Ashlyn Ryan. I am currently a health science major and I'm about to be a junior. I'm a resident on campus. Oh, also my pronouns are she, hers, hers. And um, acclimating to campus was pretty, uh, it was pretty good. Obviously with the resources that we have on campus, really like the Career Center and the ASCC for those like academic help. Um, that's really what made my transition a lot smoother. So yeah. Thanks, Ashley. Why don't we hear from Merlissa? Hello, my name is Merlissa. Um, I am currently an AMS and economics double major. Um, Am I supposed to like my transition to as a first year as a freshman? Um, it was pretty, it was pretty good. But my orientation leaders um, at the time, like they were awesome at like helping me get more comfortable with the campus. And also we had like many involvement fairs. So like clubs were definitely a big part of my first years. So that definitely helped out a lot, which is creating memories and just like going to events and things like that. So yeah, transitioning was pretty good. Um, not much of a problem. And yeah, clubs definitely helped a lot with the whole social life thing. Yeah, definitely. That social transition is huge. And I know that can be a big weight for our first year students coming in is where am I going to make friends? So the pals are here to help get you connected. Let's hear from Abby. Hi, everyone. My name is Abby. I use she, her, hers pronouns, and I'm a health science major pursuing nursing going into my fourth year here at Stony Brook. Um, I would say my transition to Stony Brook um, from high school was was interesting. It was a little bit different than I thought it'd be. I thought it would um, it'd be smooth sailing just because um, I, I just got used to a certain way of like, um, I guess like functioning in high school, but I would say it was, it was more of like a shock, um, a good shock in some ways because I liked all of like the new things that were um, being introduced to me in terms of like clubs and organizations um, like Marlissa was talking about, um, but academically, it was it was a little bit tough to get adjusted to, but I definitely reached out to my resources, um, like um, the advisors and our um, ASTC, our Academic Success and Tutoring Center, and that definitely aided in my transition for sure. Thanks, Abby. I'm glad that you highlighted a lot of those support systems that we have here. The PALS are one way that you can feel supported as a first year student or a supporter if you're joining us as a family member or supporter of your new Seawolf. Um, we're going to learn about so many more resources during your first year here. Let's meet Sasha. Hi, everyone. My name is Sasha. I am currently a fourth year student. Like This is my upcoming fourth year. I am um, a social work major here. I use she, her pronouns. And my transition to Stony Brook, it, it was a little bit of a shock. Well, I don't know, because I didn't know FAFSA was a thing until like right before the deadline. Well, like you have to do it like your high school, um, but your high school before you even go into college. But also, I didn't know it was a reoccurring thing you do every single year. So it's a lot of learning, but you get the hang of it, honestly. Um, through all the different resources, like everyone's been saying, we've been highlighting a lot of resources. We're probably going to go more into it uh, throughout the session. I highly recommend getting involved, like outside your classroom. Um, Personally, like clubs have really helped me network and professionally and socially. And I've actually made some lifelong friends through like my first semester in Pocket Theater, which is a great theater club on campus. Now I'm on the executive board for it as treasurer for the second year in a row. So it's great. You get like these leadership opportunities. You get social opportunities, networking opportunities, and just a place to like explore hobbies and your interests and just grow as a human and like as a student and a person. Thank you so much, Sasha. It's really clear how passionate you are about your experiences here. So for everyone joining us from home, we also have on the back end today for our panel, we have Megan DeJoya, who is our coordinator of family programs here. If you have any particular questions about orientation, feel free to message her in the chat. We also have our pal Jade, who is a business major with a concentration in operations. Um, Jade is also a big help on the back end, helping us manage the chat today. So if you have any questions, which we know that you came here with some questions to ask our, our students, feel free to use the chat today. Um, I'm going to ask the panelists some questions that are hopefully on your mind as well. But if you have a particular one or if you have a question for one pal in particular, feel free to use the chat box today. This is really about making sure that you feel a little bit more secure in your transition as a Seawolf. 
So let's keep going. Um, so for each of you, Ashley, Marlissa, Abby, and Sasha, can you tell us a little bit about why you chose Stony Brook in the first place? Um, I can definitely go first. Um, I think the deciding factor for me this going to Stony Brook was um, a very meticulous process. I had a lot of things to check off of like um, my list. Uh, truthfully, it was the distance that um, was like an interest for me when I first looked into it. I am um, originally from Brooklyn and I was really looking to not necessarily like run away from my family, but just put some distance between us because um, I really wanted to feel like that, um, experience that independence and just like have like that college experience. But um, that's where like the affordability of like the SUNY system ties in. So um, that was really um, like it, it was a very appealing thing for me to like see that um, it's I, I could come here and have that college experience but not um, drop a lot of money for it and like still get a really good education. I think also um, the different programs offered here were really intriguing just because I hadn't necessarily like narrowed down exactly what I wanted to do. Like I had an idea, but um, just like the various amount of um, opportunities like majors, minors, um, different, like honors programs, things like that. And um, my interest in medicine tied in as well. So us having a hospital here, right on, right here on campus was super um, appealing. So all of these things combined um, and just like it being like the Goldilocks spot of like not too far away, but far away enough that I could like have my own space. And if I, if I ever get homesick, I could just hop on the, on the LIRR and right on campus and head straight home is just a combination of those things that made me choose Stony Brook ultimately. I'll go next with this. Um, this is a great question because a lot of people might have chose Stony Brook for different reasons. My own reasoning would be um, definitely because it's a SUNY school, it's in state. So that financial affordability was a big factor for me especially with like financial aid stuff. I referenced the FAFSA, please keep filling that out every year because you can be eligible for things you may not know you were eligible for. So that really helped me. And also there's so many choices for like different majors. I think Abby kind of touched upon this, but the different choices and the variety of how many things you can study here was very appealing to me. Personally, I'm very indecisive, especially at high school. I was fresh phase, 18 years old. Like I did not know what I wanted to study. I had a broad idea. I started as a business management major and now I am a social work major. I changed majors. You're gonna find out like it's okay to change majors. Uh, I changed it around five times, maybe seven times unofficially. Like I didn't put the paperwork in. Like in my head, I'm like, next semester I take this class so I can go into this major. It's totally okay to change majors. And I chose it honestly because I saw like it's kind of like a weird reason, but I saw they they had involvement. Like, the Stoller Center is a great place for um the arts and there is always a great variety of theater and like ballet stuff and like movies going on at Solar Center and just the fact that there was involvement in the theater realm was something I really wanted to explore. The grad music program here is also very well ranked so you always have some orchestration concerts going on and just that vibrant environment really drew me in and I toured it my junior year of high school I fell in love with the campus knew I wanted to come here so now I'm here. So um, my reasons are definitely more towards Abby's. So for me, the distance was really one of the main deciding factors because I definitely wanted a dorm. I really wanted to have that independence, wanted to be away just to like for my own growth and everything like that. Also, I was really interested in science. I love science. And um, I know Steinberg is really, really well ranked for like their STEM education and everything like that. And even if I didn't want to go into STEM, right now I'm doing like health sciences and healthcare and everything like that, that's still, fantastic here and that was like the one of the greatest things is just that like no matter where I went I knew I was still in good hands I was going to get a good education no matter what which was really important to me um yeah and then again the affordability of like not breaking the bank when I'm dorming in college is really 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 great so, yeah 
my reasons also really resonate with Abby's when she said like the whole like location thing and like wanted to run well not run away like she said but like um you know it's the same sentiment like I remember I'm also from Brooklyn so the distance from Brooklyn to Long Island is not that bad compared to like all the other like and um, like New York State schools like that's all the way up in Albany or Poughkeepsie like that could be quite a distance so that also really attracted me um so if you want the independence but you you know you get homesick like Definitely, Stony Brook was really convenient in that sense. Um, the LRR is also a really easy system to like get used to. It's not nothing too crazy if you're directionally challenged like me. You know, I was able to get. You know, if I'm able to understand it, then you can too. So that's not a problem. Um, but another really like attractive factor for me when it comes to, um, like for when I, when I made the choice to attend Stony Brook was like the diversity in high school. Like I think my high school was like awarded like the most diverse high school in the district or whatever. Um, and, but it was true like and I was growing up I, I was always so used to growing up around like diverse people like seeing different people of different religions of different cultures and different races all around me so when I was touring colleges like in higher institution like higher level institutions I remember I just I didn't see a lot of people who looked like me and that definitely discouraged me when I went to Stony Brook and I saw the tours and I saw the kind of clubs that they offered the cultural clubs like BW African Student Union Haitian Student Organization that really made me feel like at home. Like when I went onto campus and I heard people speaking Creole, like that literally, like my heart, I said, wow, boy, I'm back at home. Like it literally made me feel so good. And it really reminded me that I made the right choice to go to Stony Brook. So yeah, the diversity, the price is pretty good considering that it's just like, it's a really big school, it's a SUNY. So like tuition is not that expensive compared to like, your privates. Um, the location was awesome. And yeah, the diversity and the clubs, like Sasha said, we have great clubs, great involvement. Um, I'm going to say it again, clubs are great for social life. Definitely want to come back to that notion of clubs then. Um, but you heard it here, from location to the people to the programs, you all made a great choice in coming to Stony Brook. Um, and once you're here on campus, you'll get even more of a taste of, of just how awesome that is. And the price is right. So <laughs> there's a lot of great reasons to stay here. Um, so since it's come up a few times, can you tell us a little bit more about what you're involved in? And specifically, what do you recommend first year students do to push themselves maybe outside of their comfort zone to find their community here on campus? I think the first thing to um, really get your foot in the door is one, Welcome Week has a lot of great opportunities to just, to just meet people, meet others that are first years. And it's just a really great time. Like everyone's having fun, everyone's relaxed. It's really great. Um, also for, oh, in the beginning of the semester, it's like three different days, but we have involvement fairs like Melissa was talking about way, way in the beginning. Involvement fairs are huge, literally like, 50, 75, maybe like 100 clubs will be lined out in like a day and you can just walk around. They'll be advertising their clubs. You can sign up for them right then and there. That's also a really great spot to just see all the clubs right in front of you and just to actually like learn about them and to sign up and everything like that. Um, that's definitely how I got involved in that. Right now I'm involved. I'm like, wow, words. Okay, <laughs> right now I'm involved in the astronomy club right now because it's all like virtual. We do like a lot of discord meetings and everything like that. Um, also, I'm involved with the CPO organization, so for the Center of Prevention Outreach, I have an internship with them for the upcoming semester, so that's really great. Um, yeah. I forgot the question, I'm sorry. Oh yeah, so we're talking a little bit about what are you involved in and what in particular do you um, recommend first year students do to push themselves outside of their comfort zone to find their community here at Stony Brook? I'm sorry, I think I interrupted someone, but I'm gonna make my answer super brief so you can go next. Um, I'm a part of um, Deja Vu Dance, which is one of the many dance clubs that we have on campus. Our dance community is like top notch, it's absolutely amazing. And that definitely shocked me because like, I don't know, when I think of Stony Brook, I think research, smart people, and not people popping and locking it in like, you know, LDS Center, or it's not called LDS anymore, my fault. Um, but yeah, to get out of your comfort zone, like the first step is like, you know, just get out of your room. If you're a resident, it's so hard. It's so easy for you to fall into that trap of just staying in your dorm room because it's comfortable and you don't have to talk to people. But like, all you have to do, get out of your door. That's all I did. I opened my door and then there was like people like coming at me practically like, hey, you want to be friends? Like you want to go to welcome week? 
Um, yeah, like Ashley said, Welcome Week is a great way to make friends. I made the bulk of my friends during my Welcome Week um, two years ago. I still talk to them like all the time and I'm actually gonna be like rooming with them um, this following year. So like, yeah, don't take Welcome Week for granted. We have really fun events. So that's a great way to like, you know, kind of put your foot out there and try to make friends. Also like in your, like for, this is mainly for residents because I'm a resident, but like resident halls usually have like hall council, which is a really good way to like get to know the people in your building because you're going to be seeing them almost every day. So why not? Um, and also like, don't be afraid to like join clubs. I always talk about clubs, but like you're, you're allowed to drop clubs. Like you're allowed to test out the water, dip your toe in the water and see like if you like it or not. So don't be afraid to like join a couple clubs go to a couple of general body meetings. And if like, if you see that it doesn't actually like fit what you wanted, then you can always drop it. Like there's no pressure to stay with the club or stay affiliated to a club that you're not as passionate about. So yeah, um, don't be afraid to, you know, take those kind of opportunities. Yeah, Marissa had a great point about Hall Council, especially if you're residing on campus. I highly recommend. Um, you can, there's elections at the beginning of every semester that you're, your building will advertise this a lot like there's going to be emails there might be some flyers are going to suggest that you actually run for an executive board position yourself it's a fresh start each semester so i know a lot of first year students uh run for positions to get elected in and they have this great leadership experience of networking and socializing and creating programs like programming for their hall for their building i was mount hall council president this past semester and highly recommend it you get to like get to know your ras your hd um you really get to know like professional staff and people higher up that's a great way to network you get great references they can refer you to other people if you ever need like a reference for housing or like a job or anything personally as i mentioned before i think i've briefly alluded to this. I am part of Pocket Theater on campus. I I did say this, yeah, this is ringing a bell. So we put on productions every semester. Like this semester we're trying to do, um, there's two shows we're trying to get in. I don't know if I should say it, but one of them is a Disney musical, which is our second choice. The other one is pretty well known. It's great. I'm gonna be music director in it. So I'm teaching the singers their music and everything, bring warm ups. I'm also part of this great honor society on campus so we have a lot of different honor societies professional sororities and frats and everything so if you're into leadership and like professional development highly recommend getting involved with that i am part of the national residence honorary hall so basically that's just a honor society for residential leaders on campus you get nominated by one of your peers or a professional staff who see you're very involved on campus great networking opportunity because nrhh is a uh, nationwide organization and i am part of the e-board for this as well over next year and i think that's about it with what i'm involved with i'm also like going to be an ra this upcoming year very excited and i can't stress enough that hall council really led me into getting that ra position and finding out what it means to be involved as a resident student I just want to preference real quick before I wrap this up. It's going to be my wrap up. If you are commuting, please don't be discouraged. Like getting involved is very much like you can do it as a commuter student because I did commute my first two years here. I just started residing my uh, third year, which just passed. I just ended my third year. It's very possible. Uh, reach out to the clubs, uh, network with them, try to figure out your schedule. We have campus live time every Wednesday, 1 to 20. It's a great way to get involved. Uh, community students, you can get involved. I did it, you can do it. Um, I think Sasha basically covered it all. Um, I just wanted to give a little two cents on my experience um, with just getting involved. So I see some familiar faces from our visit day yesterday. So if this is echoing it or if it's uh, a little bit repeating, just know that it's very genuine and uh, like this is like what I've experienced and what's helped me. Um, like Sasha said, involvement in Hall Council because I also was a resident my first year here and beyond um, really helped me out. So getting involved within my building helped me develop like that community and just like my find my like group of friends because I was a little bit lost um, in terms of just like social life, things like that. So not necessarily having to go too far out to make friends was super nice. Um, just because if there's like friction, I won't do it. Like if I have to walk all the way, which is not, not a good mentality, but because it was like right in my building, I just had to walk. 
three flights of stairs down and um, go to that like first ice cream social. And like I instantly had friends and like Sasha, I also applied to be on the executive board um, for my hall council. And then I started going to weekly residence hall association meetings. So I was a senator for that little, like that's the position I held in my hall council e-board. And that just helped me get closer to um, the RAs that Sasha was talking about, the RAs for my specific building. So for those of you that don't know, RAs are resident assistants um, who help out within the building. They, um, it's, it's a job that pays with a housing waiver and a meal plan waiver. And it's a really nice gig for um, those of you who are just like, love to talk to people, love to help out, um, who need a job on campus. And they look for very involved like leaders and just being on my hall, count, hall council my first year helped me get my foot in the door to be, apply, to be able to apply for that job and um, finally secure it. So that was super helpful. It is also really helpful like just professionally but as well like financially. I know my family um, is, is just, we're not like, we were like not very, um, how can I phrase this? Like financial aid is always like a plus, you know? So just having that like RA role, balance that out with like tuition, things like that was definitely helpful. But uh, overall, it's just a great gig. So if you're looking to do something like that, if you're looking to become a peer assistant leader, like one of us in the future, which I hope you are, um, just like starting off in with like the basic level involvements, it like just, it goes such a long way for just like your, like well-being as well, like your social and like uh, mental well-being, just like getting involved in talking to people, but then also just um, getting like involving yourself a little bit more and like applying for those like e-board positions. Like I said, like gets your foot in the door and ultimately you could just wind up with like um, a position that has so many benefits and like you just network. So it's, it's like an all around great experience, but you have to start somewhere. So like we're all like pushing you all to do, you have to start somewhere and like just lead with your interests. like go into a realm that like if you like 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 more um club sports you we have those where you don't necessarily have to join like a specific like sport and like become like a division one athlete but I know a lot of my friends are um like into like volleyball but they join like the club sport um and then become like leaders within that realm or if you're passionate about a certain like um just like organizations things like that so just involvement is really huge and it like just least of many opportunities. Thank you, all of you. Clearly involvement is so important for feeling like you're really a part of a community here. And if you leave with any big takeaways today, know that we are so happy that you are joining a real community. And there are so many opportunities, whether that is through residence life, theater, um, research opportunities, different ways to find your niche here. Um, but you are also here to be a student, of course, and we know that choosing what you want to study, um, whether that's your major, your minor, that can, that's a big turning point and, and it's a part of adulting, you know. So if some of you would mind talking a little bit about your selection process for your major and your, or any minors and what resources were available to you to help you throughout that process. Um, so when applying or selecting like majors and minors, um, I went through a bit of a dilemma. I came in with um, a biochem major and then I switched to chem engineering and then switched back to biochem and then applied for health science. So um, like Sasha was saying, it's very common to um, switch around with majors and minors. Um, I was for a brief moment also interested in like environmental science and bringing that as a minor. Um, but I just decided to end up taking um, certain elective courses, which I know was actually mentioned in the, ch in the chat. Um, a student was talking about um, taking on psychology as a minor, but we don't really offer that here. I actually, um, like our uh, chat monitors were suggesting, I actually took on multiple psychology courses um, without like being it like enlisted as a minor. And that was super helpful just just to build up my um, GPA, but also like for my interests because psych courses are so interesting. So um, I highly recommend consulting with your advisors and just taking on electives like that, which could be really cool. But back to like my story about like switching with majors, 
I think it can be really intimidating just because everyone has like this expectation, at least everyone seems to have it figured out um, when you're coming in, like everyone knows exactly what they're doing or so they want you to think. But like, I, I guarantee you everyone is, um, has changed their major at least once or like has been like on the fence. Um, it's completely normal. And I think when you are going through those like uncertainties um, with like swapping, you reach out to like your advisors and um, the, the people who are a little bit more knowledgeable than you. So if advisors are a little bit too intimidating, like we were talking about like um, the, the leaders within your building, your RAs might know a little thing or two about like uh, switching majors. So maybe contact them first and then they can um, connect you to advisors um, and just maybe even your major specific advisor or the advisor for the major you're interested in. So you can do both and um, talk to, just get like opinions from everyone. But I I think it's um, not stressed enough, like just how normal it is. And um, it, it's just like an extreme, it can be an extremely stressful process, but like know that like you'll figure it out eventually. Um, college is a place where you are allowed to like just explore and see what your interests are because in the end of the day you want to walk away with um, a degree that you actually uh, love and like you you want to find like a field that you want to work in so I think taking that a little bit of time to explore is really important. Yeah so <clears throat> just to go off Abby um, I also switched my major a couple of times I was first pre-nursing, then I went to bio, now I'm health science and going to nursing after health science. But again, it is really, really normal and everything like that. Um, I would really recommend going to the career center. Honestly, the career center has so many advisors there and they also just have um, coaches to really just help you kind of navigate where like, what would you wanna do? How your own skills and personality, how that can also tie into like a career that you want to do and how can that tie into a major that you would want to study and everything like that. Um, they even have resources right now. Thank you, Jay, for plugging it in. Um, they have a lot of resources on their website alone, but when you do um, start the semester, I would really recommend going on Handshake and just making an appointment with one of the advisors. Um, it's, split into, it's split up into different communities. So if you're into like the um, health care community, you would make an appointment with their advisor and then you can just chat about like, you know, what I'm, I'm good at like, you know, X, Y, and Z. How can that really translate into a major or, or, or a career that I can go into? Um, they have helped me so many times. I honestly made 20 appointments with the Career Center. They are super sweet and they're always there. So I would really recommend going to them. Ashley touched upon like such a great point about like Career Center stuff. Like if you, she was like mentioning how uh, some things, like you wanna know what you're good at, like on Handshake, they like ask you what you're good at. You might not even know, like, I don't know what I'm good at. We like, as she mentioned before, the career coaches at the career center are very much knowledgeable. They're very much, they know what they're doing. They help me, uh, I, I forgot what her name was. I really feel bad now. I think her name is Kate, but she was so nice. I met with her because I was having like a crisis within my life. Like, what do I want to do with my life? I don't know what I'm good at. Like, I don't know what I want to do with my career. This is fairly recently. This was um, fall semester of this year. And that's why I sent, I sent like, a request for an appointment through this Navigate app, I believe, or is this on Career Center website in general? I contacted them. She helped me. And now I know what major I'm on. She helped me like, decide like what's the routes you can go to and then yes and the career center is its own building it is at the basement of the library down the zebra path and if you don't haven't already make a resume or start the process of like thinking about the resume um if you have no idea like where to even start again career center they do resume type of review and if you don't have a resume at all bring a list of everything you've ever done we can they can help you start like the template how to make a resume and how to stand out in your jobs handshake again that's very highly recommended but if you haven't already they're probably going to ask also recommend you to make a linkedin because this is outside of stony brook uh parameters as well this is everyone can see it across whoever has a linkedin profile 
you're going to need a resume for that most likely or you're going to fill it in manually highly recommend career center mock interviews career coaches resume review internship opportunities as well keynote i'm going to start asterisk this because this is important um they are career fairs every semester if you need an on-campus job for any reason part-time job career center is who hosts the career fairs go out to these they are going to send you a lot of emails advertising it it's at the beginning of every semester look out for that for the fall and jade is doing a great job um just mentioned when the campus and job internship fair is. How are you going to looking into this and keep in touch with them throughout all your years and they also serve alumni as well, just to know. Um, kind of going back into like the academic side of this question, I just want to preference that like you don't have to give into like the pressure of like what you think you should be majoring in. Like, yes, your parents may be paying for your tuition, but like they're not going to be the ones taking your courses. So like just because they want you to go to med school doesn't mean you have to go to med school. At the end of the day, like my other peers have touched on, you should be doing something that you're enjoying. And the career center is a great help at like kind of like veering you towards that path. Um, I personally, I never switched my major. I considered it at one point, but then like the career center got me straight and was like, you know, you don't actually want to do that. You, you're doing that because you think you want to do that. And I was like, hey, you're right. You got me. Um, so yeah, I, I like math. I knew I liked math. Stony Brook has a great AMS um, majors that I'm still a part of, and I don't plan on switching that soon. But I did add on the economics part in my sophomore year, um, and that has also been really good at like direct me towards what I really want to do, which is like international relations, which we just have, a, we just put in a major for that. So like if you're into international relations, we got you covered too. Um, but another thing that I want to touch on is that your minor does not have to do anything with your major. Um, so just because you're like a psychology major doesn't mean you have to have a minor that's related to that. Sure, it could be cute. It could help on your resume, but like I'm a French minor. That has nothing to do with math. What does French have to do with math? Je ne suis pas. That means I don't know in French, but um, I like French a lot, so I'm going to minor in it. Um, and you know, that could also help me with like my future career path if, if need be with like international relations and whatnot. So yeah, make sure you're majoring in something that you like, take your time with it. You do have, I think you, I think at the beginning of your junior years when you have to have a major, but like you could always switch it um, like, like, you know, like Ashley and Abby, like and Sasha, I believe you could always switch your major after that declaration. So like never feel like you have to be stuck in a box when it comes to your, your academics. Thank you all so much for that insight. Um, even, even if you're in the, the audience today and you are not interested in any of the particular majors that they highlighted, I hope that you can see a little bit of yourself in those stories and all that advice about using the Career Center. Definitely check that out um, as early as your freshman year. Check, that, check them out, start building those relationships. Um, and with the pals we're mentioning too about studying something that you care about, um, a lot of students come in with a, with a predetermined idea of what it is that they want to study. And even if you don't make a full 180 switch, um, just figuring out that there might be a better fit for your talents, for your interests. Um, even if you put, have a, a value on something like making a lot of money, like there's a lot of different professions that will allow you to do that. So you don't have to completely make over your personality to be changing your major. Um, but there, there's a lot of advantages to going to a bigger school like Stony Brook that has a lot of things to offer. So thank you all for highlighting about that. We did have a question um, about what an internship looks like in college. Um, if one of you maybe could talk about that, if one of you has completed an internship that you want to share, that would be helpful. Um, I can talk about just how you could go about the process of acquiring one. So I um, have been looking for on-campus jobs through Handshake. I know that was mentioned um, in the chat here. And there is a function on Handshake that you can filter just for internships. Um, a lot of them I don't qualify for because I'm not like within that major. Um, just for health science, I, I feel like internships, you can do internships in many different fields, but um, I do more volunteer related things. So I haven't been able to experience internships yet uh, myself. But I know that um, for my peers that have um, some of my friends, they usually apply, um, I know, the spring semester is pretty heavy with internship applications and um, interview processes and um, Handshake is a great option for that like I said. Um, you can also reference a couple of other websites that um, the Career Center might be able to um, link you with. 
one of them being I think like Indeed and LinkedIn. Um, you can even go through with um, just like personal connections. So if you know like a friend of a friend worked with like Dropbox's internship, you could like um, contact them. But I know um, the earlier that you start, the better. And um, just don't limit yourself to searching in one like field or website and go to like the I'm sorry, it was like mentioned here in the chat. The It's like on the tip of my tongue, um, the job fairs. So the job fairs offer like jobs obviously, but they also um, have internship opportunities available that they're like um, looking to recruit students with. So when you go into those, go in with like a resume handy um, and then you can just see what they are offering. And um, I don't know, it's just, just like, just be open to it and start early would be my advice. Thanks, Abby. Um, I wanna make sure we get to a few of our other questions, but all the pals have had really awesome, unique experiences. And when you go to your Seawolf connections and you make your connection with your individual pal, they can definitely keep you up to date about their work experiences too. Um, so can you tell us a little bit on that topic of academics about your transition academically, um, particularly uh, from high school? I know a lot of our first year students are coming straight from high school. How did you adjust to the Stony Brook curriculum and the, the academic rigor here? I can start this off. Um, it was a lot of, again, it was adjustment period for I think the first semester is a good buffer period. Like it was a big adjustment. You might not get, you may get adjusted as, as quickly as the first couple of weeks after the first couple of midterms you have, or even just it takes a whole semester of a full course load to get adjusted. I went from studying, like actually studying for tests and doing classwork very minimally in like my high school to like trying to keep up. Like my first semester here was a lot of, it was a wake up call, honestly, about how much work goes into college and managing your time with extracurriculars and uh, homework tests. You have more than you have four or more classes, usually something around there. And it's, it sounds like it's not a lot because you're used to like eight courses throughout high school. But these are like it's a whole different ball game, And to adjust myself um time management like you're going to hear this a lot especially in your sea wolf connections we talk about time management all the time uh crucial for everything you need to schedule out when you're doing your classes you don't necessarily have to like schedule every minute of every day just know when your classes are know when you have the free time to do schoolwork set that time aside to actually do your schoolwork the thing is also you need to schedule downtime for yourself know when you have space to take care of the bare necessities. You need to keep feeding yourself. You need to take a shower, you need to sleep. Lots of people neglect the common necessities so they can try to get more time out of studying, which is not a necessity of like living. So like make sure you're getting enough sleep, you're hydrating and everything. The thing is you need some sort of planning system for sure. Um, I don't know how long sticky notes can get you through your college career of sticking it around your wall of due dates. We at Stony Brook, especially with your email account, you get a Google Calendar. So this is the mecca of what Stony Brook is all about. Like you're going to see that a lot of people are like, oh, just check my Google Calendar, I'll send you a link. Like you can like compare my schedule to yours and we can find a place to like meet up or like when we can meet up and stuff. The thing is personally, I don't, use google calendar for my own scheduling i use it for like my job but i rewrite everything into a physical planner only because um i'm just picky with like actually putting in the dates and times i think that's a lot of time it's not that hard but like on my own i like writing it down seeing it physically checking it off and always having it no matter what i carry it everywhere if my phone's dead and someone's asking me what's your plan like i pull out my agenda write it in look at it it's time management's crucial it's gonna be a shock, but I know y'all can do it because you got accepted here for a reason. You guys are the smartest of the applicant pool. So it is a competitive school. You got in, so we believe in you. Sorry, Emily. Um, so I want to add on to what Sasha said about um, academic rigor. I think for me, um, I, I touched upon this earlier, but it was definitely um, 
a little bit of a bumpy transition just because I went from um, barely studying in high school to just like it realizing how different it was here in college. Um, I, I think I didn't really grasp what studying was um, in high school because studying to me was cramming all the notes right before an exam on my bus ride there um, the morning of. So here it's definitely very different. Um, something I noticed about um, college in particular is the earlier you start on anything, the easier it gets. So you know like the best part about like, I guess like uh, the college life is just having like all the dates and um, exams prior and like in the beginning of the semester. So you know everything in advance and you just like Sashna was saying, you just input it all into your Google calendar. And then from there you can, um, I guess like plan maybe two weeks in advance, a week and a half in advance to start studying. And um, another thing is do it right the first time. So I, <laughs> I'm guilty of this. This is all like advice, like from my mistakes. So I've done every one of these just so you don't have to. Um, don't like if you have a class that it has um, attendance that's optional, attend anyways um, and take notes the first time instead of uh, like paying attention half of the time and like taking a nap the other way. If you do it right the first time, it's less work for you and you're less stressed out um, throughout. So it's just it's just easier for you. And then you can reserve your studying time for review instead of like the studying time being the time where you actually learn the material like you're supposed to learn in lecture and then review during your study sessions instead of learning brand new material like a week before the exam. So do it right the first time. Um, don't pile on lectures, especially if it's optional. And um, just know that you have to know yourself very well to be able to succeed in college. So whether you like know your like learning style, whether you learn best through like auditory, like simulation, if you can listen to lectures, do that, like download your lectures, or if you need like visual um, diagrams and things like that, just know how you learn best and stick to those things. If it's one or two different types of learning methods, um, take some tests and um, yeah, just like, I guess, it's all about you so it's not it's like no surprise that like it is very contingent upon like how you respond to like material just like uh, that will translate to your success here so it all starts with you take this time during the summer to just like get to know yourself a little bit better really appreciate that emphasis on self-reflection abby um a thing that I think is universal for all of our incoming students is that this is a big move for independence. And this is, you are the one creating your own schedule. You are the one figuring out how you study. And that can be intimidating, but you also have so many supports here. So building off that question of academic rigor, I know we have some questions about what your freshman schedule looked like. Um, and I know we don't need to get into too much minutia, but um, how many classes do you recommend scheduling for students? Um, how much time did you have like getting between buildings? So could maybe two of you talk us through a little bit of what freshman year looked like and what you wish freshman year looked like for yourself. I'll quickly do this. I know I like do elaborate answers. I'm gonna do this so quick. I'm gonna do a speed run. Um, I took four classes my first semester. It was two uh, Monday, Wednesday, two Tuesday, Thursday, or I think there's recitation, which is just an extra type of going over the class. It's an extra review session for like 50 minutes on top of your lecture. So it was, so it was Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Tuesday, Thursday. I took four classes, the bare minimum, 12 credits, only because um, I didn't want to overwhelm myself with credits. I think I was enrolled in 15, but then I... I dropped that class during the ad swap drop period because it was a lot, especially because I've never done anything like this and it was just a lot. Um, I recommend talking to an advisor and just feeling it out for yourself, especially during the ad drop swap period, because it's better to have an enrolled in like more classes than you need than to be under enrolled and then be like under 12 credits, you lose your full time status. And um, I just recommend like looking into the classwork, classy evals is where you can look up how the professor is, how the class is. So don't overwhelm yourself with like five really hard like science, technology, mathematics courses all at once. You're taking like biochem, bio, then chemistry, then physics all in one semester. You're going to burn it out. If some people can manage it, but like for me, I needed that like adjustment period, especially that whole first year freshman year. 
um, I really needed to adjust. So I did the 12, 13 credit kind of thing. I can go super quickly too. Um, I'm like the exact opposite freshman year. I am what you call an overachiever and I took on more than I could eat. But um, so yeah, I think I took like 18 credits, which is not too much, but it is more than like I would recommend, honestly. If you know that you can handle that type of work ethic, then like totally go for it. But I'm, I procrastinate. So maybe 18 credits wasn't the way to go my freshman year of college, like when you're new to this whole thing. Um, yeah, I definitely wish I took it more easy on myself. Because you have four years, you could do a lot in four years. You don't have to cram it all into one semester. Um, I think I was under the impression that, you know, when you're in high school, you take eight hours worth of coursework. Oh, yeah, four classes, five classes, that's easy. No, it's not, because these are college classes. The rigor is a lot harder um, to, like, to keep up with. Like, you miss one lecture, and then all of a sudden, you're, like, three homeworks behind. It's crazy. Like, it goes super fast. So understand yourself. Abby touched on this, like, um, like the last question. Know what you can handle, your work ethic. Understand yourself. And then um, that's how you can determine like how packed you are your freshman schedule to be. But you know, like I said, you have four years. No need to pack it all in just because you can. I'm sorry. I know you said two people. I just wanted to um, clarify something that Melissa said that I wish I had known. Um, remember this. So if you like re remember back to high school, if you any of you took like AP classes, AP classes usually last an entire academic year, um, so like two semesters. In college, so it's AP Bio, for example, is um, two semesters. In college, that's condensed down into one semester. So all of like the fluff um, classes are cut out. So you know, um, in high school, you have like uh, the fir very first day of classes. It's like an introduction. You go around introducing yourself. No, college, you dive straight in. Like you, you miss the first day, like the first lecture, you're already behind. So um, like Melissa was saying, you might have been used to like that number, like that seven or eight courses that you were taking but it's, it's a lot more condensed and it runs at a much faster pace in college. So you just, just ease into it, like everyone else was saying. I just wanted to clarify that because I think that didn't really click for me until I got here. Thank you. I appreciate all of you being so real in this panel too of what it looked like as well as what if you could turn back the clock, you would do a little bit differently. Um, so just generally, if you could give freshman year you any advice and therefore all of our incoming first year students, just one piece of advice, if they take away anything from your panel today, what's the one thing that you want them to know? To get involved early and to just put, you know, like you, this is the chance to create a new you. So if you were like really shy beforehand and everything like that, this is like a whole new chapter for you and just take advantage of that, honestly. Um, I think Abby said this, but go to class, please. Um, I missed a lot. Literally every Thursday, I'd be like, I don't even know what happened my freshman year. Just attend your class because attendance is usually like a part of your grade or somewhat factored in. Or if it's not, you're going to be missing like lecture material either way. Go to class and just be there like mentally in class. Like, don't go to class, like, with, like, for me, like, um, get up at a good time so you, I have enough time to get ready. I'm not rolling out of bed and just walking to class, like, dead zombied out, and then I'm zombied out in class. You're not going to retain any information. It's going to be an hour and a half of you staring into space. Uh, so if you have a routine or you don't have a routine, make a routine for your college classes and just go. Go to class. I think my um, piece of advice, well, it's two main things that I've definitely said before, but I want you to take away um, from this meeting is um, do it right the first time. I think that's a statement that I really stand by. Um, it just makes your life easier if you just, like Talasha was saying, um, attend le lecture and take notes the first time, do it right. Um, and then for me, which I relate to Marlissa a lot, I'm the world's biggest procrastinator. Like I was saying, um, I can study, like I had like um, AP stats in high school first period and on the bus ride there I would study for like my tests in the morning so that's how last minute I am used to being but I've really embraced trying to get like ahead of like my um, schedule so doing things early and doing things right the first time I would say would be my um, biggest pieces of advice because it really helps you out and it lowers your stress and it just makes you a like a well-rounded person, like your skin clears up when you don't stress, like life is good. So just do it right the first time and um, do things early, it's great. Yeah, I say this all the time. Also, what Abby said, wonders and facts. 
um, retweet all of that. That's the biggest piece of advice that I could ever give. But also like, I don't know why I see a ton of freshmen or first years do this. Please do not glorify like hurting yourself, not physically, but like I see students in like the cafeterias like, oh, I stayed up till 6 a.m. Yeah, totally, dude. Like, that's not cool. Staying up till insomnia is not cute. Please go to sleep. Take care of your body. Your body needs sleep. Like literally, please do not. I do not mess with sleep. Like I know for me, like I have insomnia sometimes and like it sucks. It's the worst thing ever. Go to sleep. Okay. Don't pull all-nighters. They don't benefit you in the long run. Those are diminishing returns when it comes to studying with all-nighters. Um, like I said, take care of yourself. Mental health, very important, especially in college. It's a new environment. It can be more competitive and some people do not thrive in those kind of environments. So just make sure that you're taking it easy. We have resources like that. We have CAPS, which is like, um, they offer like free, like 10 hours worth of ter therapy. So like, if you think that you need those um, resources, definitely take advantage of them. Um, like you don't have to pay any extra for that. So yeah, that's the biggest key of advice. I don't want to hear any of you people in this call right now in like West Side Dining talking about, yeah, I did an all-nighter. Mm -hmm. What time did you sleep last night? That's not cute, okay? You look tired. I see the bags under your eyes, okay? The dark circles. Go to sleep. She said it. <laughs> um, and that's a really good point. All of these are, are great points, but I definitely want to echo what Marissa is saying about, about taking care of yourselves. It's definitely that stereotype of college students that you stay up all night, you don't get any sleep. I try to think about sleep as it's a free gift that I give myself. Like life is hard enough. <laughs> I might as well do this. Um, and free is one of our favorite words. So using those free services that, or ones that you're already paying for, like the buses and the services at counseling and psychological services. And Ashley brought up CPO, Center for Prevention and Outreach. And so, so many resources. And we don't want to overwhelm you with like too many different names to memorize. Um, it becomes a lot more real when you're here on campus, but keeping in mind and taking care of yourself. Mm, definitely. Everyone <laughs> needs to prioritize that, especially your first year. Um, so we're nearing the end of our panel. So I want to make sure that our panelists have some time to highlight what specific first year supports there are in place. Um, and if someone maybe wants to maybe mention like what you do as PALS and how that role works um, and any other supports that are available specifically for our incoming first year students that they should know about if they have their, their pens and paper ready. <laughs> Um, so as first years, you are put in this community, we call them the undergraduate colleges. So um, just because they're new, I'm going to reference my phone really quickly and read them out to you. We have um, the Creativity, Technology and Innovation um, Undergraduate College, which um, links with Roosevelt community if you plan to reside on campus, Global Health, Wellness and, Com and, Wellness and Community, which um, is coordination with age community and then social justice equity and ethics which is with mendelssohn so this is a little bit of a difficult like concept to understand but basically these communities are created just so you have a smaller group of um, individuals to connect with and um, to foster just like your success here at stony brook um, they coordinate with your living communities but also so these three UDCs is what we call them, uh, have their own specific group of advisors. So these advisors will be with you your entire first year. And they're different from regular advisors or like major advisors because they know what it's like to be like, just confused your very first year here and they take that into account. So I would say that's one of your bigger um, resources that you should take advantage of because it's specifically catered towards you. And then um, also, the SBU 101 class that you all will be enrolled in specifically for um, first years, that is basically a more in-depth version of this whole orientation process. So they walk you through career, the career center and like the career communities and how you can sign up for that. And all of these um, like nitty gritty things about um, our university that you can take advantage of. So I would say those are the two big things that I can think of off the top of my head. I want to shout out us, um, pals. We are, it stands for Pearson Leaders. We're gonna be here for like our students, like our first years and our transfer students um, for like, the whole year. We're like, I feel like we're a pretty good resource because like we've been through it all. So like any questions that you may have, like I don't have to be your pal. Like you don't have to receive an email from me for you to 
you know, contact me. Like, of course, like my emails are always open. I don't buy it anymore. So I'm kidding. I never did. Um, so any questions you got, I will answer them. Um, but also we have like mentors like all over campus, whether that be for commuters or for like our transfers, but that doesn't apply to you, obviously. But we also have like peer mentors and like success navigators, success navigators, let me pronounce that correctly, um, with their ASTC or Academic Success and Tutoring Center. We talk about them a lot. It's because they're awesome. Um, so definitely feel free to like, you know, get a success navigator. They're literally here to see you succeed. Like who wants, who doesn't want to succeed? Um, and the Career Center. Career Center has a special place in my heart. Honestly, you do not need to know your career. You don't have to be set on anything for you to go to the Career Center. They will, I was literally a broken piece of bones and they fixed me up real good. I left that Career Center like, but like a whole new person. So yeah, there's way more, but I can't think of them off the top of my head. Yeah, so Marissa and Abby and Ashley, we're all they're all great resources. And that's what POWs or peer assistant leaders are here. We're resources for on campus, anything, anything on campus, we can refer refer you or give you information with what you can do, how you can succeed as a student. So even if you like lose con like you don't have any a point of contact like, throughout the year. You do now, like you have pals, your pal is going to be your point of contact and reference throughout the year. We highly recommend if you ever have a question about anything like throughout the year, or you even need like someone to help you. Like I'm going to this event, like Friday, this is a driving movie thing. I have no one to go with. What do I do? Like we can, if we're free, we'll like come. Like we're here to like assist you. Personally, that's what I would do. If you, if I'm free and there's a drive-in movie, I will come with you. I will come into the drive-in movie because uh, Detective Pikachu was the last one. So that's about pure assistant leader. Thank you all so much. Um, I'm so sad that we're at five o'clock, but thank you to our amazing peer assistant leaders. I'm glad that Sacha gave you a little shout out too at the end. Um, your pal is going to be with you for your whole first year. Um, they're a great support system for the academic transition, social transition. Um, what's the best place to, to work out on campus and study? So I know that some of you still have some lingering questions. So if you haven't yet met with your individual pal, register for your Seawolf connection so that you have a chance to meet with them. And we are going to head over to our next event that started one minute ago for our commuting to campus and living on campus. So check out the link that Megan shared in the chat if you want to join us tonight. Otherwise, definitely register for your upcoming session so you can learn more about what your living on campus or commuting to campus experience will be like. But thank you to all of our panelists. Thank you to our new Seawolves and supporters for joining us and have a wonderful evening, everyone. We'll see you on campus in August.